a retreat in preparation for our pilgrimage to the Holy Land. 33 Days to Greater Glory, a total consecration to the Father through Jesus, based on the Gospel of John. Week 1. Opening Characters. This week covers the opening characters of the Gospel of John. They are as follows. A prophet like Moses. John the Baptist. The First Apostles. The Jews. Nicodemus. The woman at the well, and perhaps surprisingly, the woman caught in adultery. Day 1. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John 1 verses 1 to 18. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. John bore witness to him, and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Reflection by Father Michael Gately, 33 Days to Greater Glory. A prophet like Moses. Do not come near. Thus God spoke to Moses from a bush that burned with a fire that did not consume it. But while Moses was not allowed to draw near, he still got to behold the glorious sight and had the privilege of hearing the voice of the Lord, the all-powerful Word of God. And what did that Word reveal? It revealed God's compassion and mercy. For God said, I have seen the affliction of my people, and have heard their cry. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them. Exodus 3 verses 7 to 8. And the word also revealed the name of God. I am who I am. Exodus 3 verse 14. That divine name, full of power and life, like the burning bush, is aflame with existence without needing any fuel from which to draw its power. For God himself is. God himself is existence. God himself is power and life, the source of all life and all that is. That merciful, all-powerful God then used Moses to deliver the people of Israel from their slavery in Egypt, leading them across the Red Sea to Mount Sinai in the desert. And on the third day at Sinai, God called Moses to the top of the mountain, which was shrouded in smoke because the glory of the Lord descended on top of it like a consuming fire. But that fire did not consume Moses who received the law as a spark to set God's people alight with a burning love for their God. In response to the word of the law, God's people proclaimed, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Exodus 24 verse 7 But they were not obedient, for when Moses returned to the top of the mountain, the people made a god of their own, a golden calf, and worshipped it instead of the only God. At that, God's anger flared up, but Moses interceded and the Lord relented of the punishment he had planned. Why? Because as the Lord said to Moses, He is a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy and faithfulness. Exodus 34 verse 6 And the one to whom God showed the greatest mercy of all was Moses himself. For Moses enjoyed an intimacy with God unlike anyone else on the face of the earth. After all, it was to Moses that God revealed his name, to Moses that God spoke as with a friend. 
To Moses that God granted the familiarity of face-to-face -face dialogue, though without actually seeing God's face. Having already tasted the sweetness of the Lord and his friendship, Moses longed for more, he pined for more, and so, despite those earlier words of the Lord from the bush, do not come near, Moses did draw near as he expressed his desires in a heartfelt plea to the Lord, I beg you, show me your glory, Exodus 33 verse 18. Sadly, God could not grant that prayer, to see the fullness of his glory would be to see his face, and to see God's face would have consumed poor Moses, as the Lord himself explained, you cannot see my face. For man shall not see me and live. Exodus 33 verse 20. But God loved Moses, and in his great tenderness, he revealed to him as much glory as the man could bear, saying, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand upon the rock, and while my glory passes by I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Exodus 33 verses 21 to 23. The Lord's back, that was the most glory ever revealed to man, up to that point. It was the limit decreed by God, and yet our good and gracious God strove to give Moses even more. He did so by revealing the promise of a greater glory, and even though Moses himself would not see it in this life, he could at least become the messenger to point to it, and he is indeed that messenger precisely when he writes in Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. And how would that future prophet be like Moses? He would speak with God face to face. Exodus 33 verse 11. And how would that prophet experience a greater glory? He would not just speak with God face to face, but would actually see God's face. As Pope Benedict XVI explains, The promise, from Moses, of a prophet like me, implicitly contains an even greater expectation that the last prophet, the new Moses, will be granted what was refused to the first one, a real, immediate vision of the face of God, and thus the ability to speak entirely from seeing, not just from looking at God's back. Jesus is that prophet, the one with a real, immediate vision of the face of God, and more than a prophet, Jesus himself is the Word become flesh, the Word who was with God, and the Word who is God. So, he doesn't just see God, he is God. He's the only begotten Son of God who's in the bosom of the Father, and he shares with us where he is from, what he has seen and who God is. The conclusion to the prologue of John's Gospel summarizes it best. No one has ever seen God, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. John 1 verse 18. That last phrase describes Jesus' mission, his passion, and his purpose. It is to make the Father known and loved, to reveal the truth about God, to allow us to see what Moses could not see. The glorious face of the Father shining forth from the face of Christ revealing not only the truth about God, but also the truth about ourselves, as we'll learn tomorrow. Today's prayer. I beg you. Father, show me your glory. Show me your face. Let me behold your glory shining forth from the face of Christ.